Okay. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the reading stream. I am your host, Ledenmon14. It's been far too long. We're just going to do it. Uh, I've got way too much energy after stream. And also, I took a little bit of a, a little bit of an old school remedy <clears throat> to help my throat. Uh, will it work? I don't know. You tell me. Anyway, what are we going to do today? It's that time. The time we've all been waiting for. It's time. Da, 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 no, we're going to do what's called a mass update stream. How does this work? Well, you see, uh, due to me not streaming in the last week or so, there are actually quite a few games I haven't really updated. <laughs> and how are we going to update them all? Well, we're going to update them all, yeah, in one stream. So, you know, here's how the, here's how the mass stream is going to work. First of all, <laughs> I'm going to go to .com, and we're literally only going to play one game. Then we're going to move on. So this is going to be a, just basically a huge just kind of, you know, update stream. Hopefully my throat will hold out. <coughs> I suspect about at right about now-ish, but really closer to 8 o'clock, uh, Wisconsin. Um, <laughs> That uh, my throat will inevitably, inevitably, just ink. But with it shall also my excitement. So, yep, I of all people know and can tell at a moment's glance whether or not, oh, yeah, I should be fine to sleep tonight or, tonight, or not really a good chance to sleep right now so let's just play against new strategy nice six seven one best of luck to our opponent and we're just gonna yeah now one thing i am gonna do here is drop back the queen yeah allows them to do some counter play just kind of attack this we're just gonna move out the knight and uh Go from there. Yeah, that's a decent move. Um, problem is we just take it. Yeah, they can't really take back with the knight. Free pawn. So, and it forces this knight to move. Where does it move? I don't know. Maybe here. I, I don't know. I don't know where it moves, but it's uh, well. Actually, you can't move there because the queen. Uh, yeah, I don't know where this knight moves. I really don't. So, okay. <laughs> and right away, we have an interesting sort of... Okay, that's fair. Let's see, the problem with that is I can just move here. And what's black going to do? I don't know. Maybe they move here. I mean, that's not very smart. Maybe they move here. I don't know. You know. The problem for them is, is I get all these moves with tempo on a single night. So, you know, eventually I'll run out of good square. Ooh, yeah, see, and ooh, that's uh, that's what we call a blunder, folks. And just like that, we've taken the early lead. Now from here, what do we do? Yeah, I recommend trading as many pieces as possible, yeah. So, <laughs> it's just, uh, let's keep the fun bags going. Oh, this is a free, free pawn. Oh, is it now? I say we attack this knight. Uh, this one over here. Yeah, I mean, they can take the free pawn all they want. Next move, boom, I'm attacking the knight. Now, let's say they move in with the knight. Pretty logical move. We attack it again. Okay. Attacking with the bishop. Do I care? Not really. <laughs> what I'm essentially saying is here is you don't have the time to do what you want. I have the time to just attack, attack, attack. We'll create some double attacks here. 
and you know our bishops already developed our knights already developed our queens already developed you don't have what i'm essentially saying here yeah yeah they're just gonna give up this this bishop because what i'm essentially saying here is you ain't got time you ain't got time to do what you want now normally you would say the best move is to block with the queen that's what you'd normally say the best move here <laughs> believe it or not is actually to sidestep and i'll show you guys why see here's the best move and let me show you why the best move in this position is actually to sidestep normally not a move you would want to make you give up castling rights you give up a lot of stuff the point here is it's actually the best move why i mean the queen can't come down here for some time the bishop's being attacked like this is being attacked yeah, we give up castling rights, but is that really so bad here? You can't go through your own knight. You know, it's going to be a while before they can move the queen in here. And checkmate. I mean, can they move the bishop here and check? Sure. I'll just take with the knight. Yeah, they have to move the bishop back. So, also, this queen's always going to be a target for us. And now that the bishop has moved back, what do we do? We just keep attacking stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> so, for example, let's increase the bishop's range right also also let's just directly attack this bishop is it defended yeah do i care no let's just mainly take an attacker out of the equation and basically what i'm saying is hey attacker here attacker here yeah yeah what i'm basically saying is like you don't have time you know essentially what i was saying earlier yeah you don't have time to do what you think you can do now, one thing I am going to do here, very important, I'm going to move the knight here. That way my rook is free to slide on this queen. So, now, what do I do here? Again, some more manual kind of castling. What I'm going to do here is basically say, okay, my king isn't where it's supposed to be. Let's get it where it's supposed to be. So, can I directly attack the queen now? Not really. But if I move right here... Then next move, the rooks lined up on the queen. I don't know. What do you want to do about that? I don't know. Not looking good. Now, there are some some checks from the knight I have to watch out for. Luckily, this one's covered. This fork right here is covered by this knight. And this is covered by this pawn. So, now, if this and this wasn't covered, I wouldn't make that move. You know, that's just not a good idea. Interesting move there. Because that lets me attack this and attack the queen at the same time. Now, for them, it's pretty good looking because they've got the rook backing it up. But I'm going to keep an eye on this square right here because, for example, let's say I move my rook here. That's looking pretty good. But I'm going to move my rook to the default position, which is here. And I just like it. It lines up on the queen. Um, yeah, actually, no, let's move it here. Because there's all this action going around on this pawn. And I kind of want to be a part of it. Now, what's the logical move for them? I mean, the queen has a free check right here. So let's not ignore that. That's, that's the best move they can make. Unfortunately, it doesn't really help them. Because I simply block the queen with my knight. And basically, we get moves for free. But yeah, this their own knight is really shutting down their best move. I mean, see, I saw that one coming. So see, all we have to do here is we queen block. <laughs> we literally just say, hey, uh, you want to trade? I'm up bishop. Like, yeah, what's what's good, man? You want you want it? Okay. <laughs> I don't care. Now, which pace do we take back with? Well, the rook is the big the big kahuna here. So, because next move, yeah, we attack this with the knight, and, I mean, what are you going to do about it? Okay, you attack the, the rook. That's cool. What if I just take this with the rook? That's an important question to ask. Well, I, can I? No, I cannot. The rook's currently pinned. So, a good move by them to find that. Um, so, I can't. I actually lose the rook here, which is pretty important. But what I'm going to do is simply counterattack. And all I'm going to say is, like, hey... <laughs> You know, there's two things I can do. I can break the pin, which won't be in time. But basically what I'm going to do is lose the rook for the knight. But at the same time, 
I'm going to try to do something a little crafty here. So I'm going to attack with this knight and basically just say, hey, I'm taking this knight. Uh, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? So, again, a little crafty move there to basically grab the pawn for free. But yeah, they take that and, okay, what am I going to do? Well, like I said, we've already planned this. I'm just going to take this bishop. This this knight's gone, but then this knight's free to move. So, can't move here, can't move there, but it can move mm, here, which is pretty interesting. And more importantly, I can defend the knight with this, with the bishop, which is something I'd probably want to do anyway. So defend it with the bishop, looking pretty good. Now, is there a tricky check from the king? Eh, from the knight, kind of, like right here. Kind of tricky, but, you know, not too worried about it. Okay, they don't even go for the check. They just kind of do whatever that move does. That buys us a turn. Let's move right here and line up on the rook because uh yeah why not actually let's control this file this uh open file right here yeah let's let's control that that looks pretty juicy looks pretty good and let's see what they do now we're kind of close to the end game now so yep they're up a rook i mean then again a rook and we got the oh uh, yeah they're kind of up like half a point so to speak but, you know, pretty early in the game, mistakes can happen. Again, they're lower rated, like 671. I can make mistakes. I definitely can. There's one thing I've proven on this channel is that I can blunder. So, okay, they're just attacking this pawn. I kind of like that move for us. Yeah, I guess it opens up our king to a check, but I don't care. We get a tempo on this knight. I mean, that's pretty. Pretty good looking. Um, and I can take this pawn as long as this bishop, as long as this rook lines up. So, yeah, I don't know what they're going to do about that. Um, basically, we're going to force the action here. Um, wait, do I have a better move with the knight? Knights can do some tricky stuff. Not really, no. Um, hmm. By that same token, I could counterattack with the knight. No, the, yeah, yeah, you know what? Let's move the knight out of danger. And at the same time, yeah, let's just counterattack this piece. What we're just saying is just straight up like, okay, um, you can't do that. So let's move the knight. Mm, actually, no, let's move the rook. I like the rook move. Let's move the rook there. That's ultimately the better move. Can they slide their rook? Sure. I'll just, yeah, okay. So they're basically just saying, okay, hey, this this pawn's yours. Now, can they come in here with the knight? Yes, they can. And that's ultimately what they s sought to undermine here. The problem for them is, yeah, I can just move the king. And, you know, what are they going to do about that? I don't know. Um, So what I'll do here is I'll actually push by. Push by, very important move. Um, and I'm basically doing one thing. I'm basically, you know, tempting them to take with the rook here. Uh, and they do. So, very important move for us. Now what I want to do is move here. And... Yeah, just kind of... Basically, I want to trade these rooks off as soon as possible. So a very kind of subtle move here, but I basically just want to move here, slide here, and just say, hey, next move I'm taking this rook. What are you going to do about it, you know? <laughs> so, all right. That's the play there. Also, I could just attack with my bishop right here. That seems pretty good. This bishop's doing quite a lot right here. So, also, also... If I can get, ever get rid of this pawn, there's a big old fork right here on both those rooks. So, now what do I do here? Nah, I don't know. I guess I could watch out for some knight forks. Like, you know, I don't know. Maybe here or here or... I mean, where's this knight going to go? I guess it can go here. That's a play. Um, 
But I could even move the knight here and attack this, you know, this rook. But I think the ultimate play is just to slide this and just say, yeah, hey, what are you going to do about it? You know, I'm straight up offering the trade. What's good? You know, do you have time to set up your move? I don't think so, you know. So we just straight up offer the trade. Okay. And they go there. And then I will go here. Because why not? All right. Oh, that's just a free pawn. I don't, that's not very smart. I guess it does give up the knight. So there's that. But, uh, you know, in game stuff. All kind of stuff can happen in in game stuff. We just attack the rook. So there's that. Plenty of time for them. They should win on time here if they're if they're smart. But if they kind of stumble here, they should blunder quite a bit. So, all right, this knight is doing a pretty good job of keeping me boxed out. I will say that. Um, from here, we just move the bishop here, right here, and we just offer the knight trade. You know, just let them take the knight and. You know, they don't want to do that? Okay. I just move right here. You know. Yep. And, ooh, interesting move there. Uh, what I essentially do here is just say, hey, you can take this, but, um, you know. Ooh, that's actually very tricky. But I'm going to move right here. Yep, to just kind of block this pawn. And then we just attack the rook and... Uh, what I will do is move right here. Yeah. Oh, wait, we're in check. Wow, by the pawn. That's funny. <laughs> All right, so I got to move the king. Rook gets a free piece. Probably could have used more time here, but yeah, I feel like we could have had this one, to be honest. Knight's controlling some stuff. Doesn't really matter, you know. So we just move that out. Uh, king check. Ooh, nice to pick up the bishop. It's actually pretty clutch for them. And then we just go there. Yep. Free pawn right there. Pretty smart. Um, yep. Pretty smart maneuvering by them, by uh, Black. But, uh, you know, ultimately, could I have picked up this pawn? Yeah, probably, you know. Or gotten them to make a mistake. Probably, yeah. But, you know, I did blunder quite a few pieces there. I think me blundering the knight was key, though, obviously. So. All right. Plenty of time for them. All right. Do, 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 do. Oh, and they got the queen at the end, too. That's sweet. <laughs> Good for them. Yeah, they pre-moved it all the way over here. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, they won on time, I'm pretty sure. So not too bad. Time pressure got to us there. But yeah, would I have won that game? Like if it's just you allow 30 minutes for both sides? Probably, yeah. I wouldn't have been under time pressure. So I will play one more, you know. First chess game back, you know. I ain't worried about it. So. All right, here we go. Mr. Taco Taco, man. All right, they played pretty good for that one, honestly. Uh, it helped that we blundered a little bit to match their blunders. So, all right. Ah, uh, interesting. Let's just push by. We'll create a little pawn chain here. Pawn chain. Looks pretty good. Uh, let's take back with the queen, actually. Yeah. Don't see that too often, but... Pretty solid move, honestly, in this position. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Um, what does that even do here? <laughs> I mean, I guess you threaten an outpost here. That's uh, something. But uh, I'll just go here. I mean, I guess they can move here and attack the queen, yeah. Uh, I guess that is a move, yeah. Uh, actually, to stop that move. Okay, I was going to say, let's move here, but... No, 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 that's the move I expected, is this first. But uh, you do you. You know, I'm not going to not gonna judge, but I, I kind of am because I just did. But uh, 
It's okay, Taco Man. You do you. Yeah, see, I anticipated that quite a while ago. Now, here's the thing. We have this move here, which uh, also this move, pretty darn good. So we basically destroy the outpost uh, right away. So, And yeah, we developed this bishop kind of for free. Kind of a thing I wanted to do anyway. So, okay, queen here, what does that say? Not much. I mean, I'll just develop the knight and castle, queen side. I mean, what's this queen even doing against this pawn chain? Against your own pawn chain? I don't know. Uh, this, queen, this queen ain't doing much, bro. I'll say that's a weird move. Hmm. Dilemmas. Now, I... Because there's all these pawn chains over here, I should probably castle to this side. So, uh, ah, that's my good buddy. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> Chain link two with the horsey. Um, is this, is this, uh, master rule four? Chain link two? We don't have chain links anymore. No one plays trap cards. This has got to be Master Rule 4 format. Anyway, hey, Iga. How's it going? Budmon14 here. And today, we'll be playing a game called Not Yu-Gi-Oh! So what I'm going to do is castle over here. Because all these pawn chains basically spell defense. So, there's that. Um, let's attack this queen. because. Uh, yeah, why not? We're just openly saying, hey, <laughs> you're not paying attention. We, uh, oh, okay. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. We're also eliminating this knight. So, that's pretty good for us. Um, don't know what Taco Taco Man's gonna do about it. But, uh, we're basically saying, hey, thanks for all the defenders back here. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, free pawn, and uh, you guys know how I feel about free pawns. You gotta watch out, man. Free pawns, you gotta watch out. So, let's move this. Uh... Now, another thing I will note is this bishop is undefended. Pretty important right here. What will I do about it? Well, I'll tell you what I do about it. I'll give away this pawn. And what we're essentially gonna do is just say, hey... You ain't got time to do whatever you want to do. So, how do I defend this bishop? Well, I'll just stick it right here, yeah. So, uh, yeah. They should take this pawn, very predictably so. And then we're going to make our move. Alright, you guys ready? I'm ready. Alright, free pawn. I mean, yeah, you guys got to be real careful. Whenever, like, free pawn comes up in chess, be careful, man. And be careful. And now what we're essentially saying is uh, your queen's under attack. Are the free pawns worth it? I sure hope so. <laughs> That's basically what we're saying here. Uh, this queen is quickly becoming trapped. Uh, is a better move the rook or the bishop? Well, you see, I gotta look at all the options. Ooh, the rook actually blocks the queen defense. Wow. I wouldn't have saw that one uh, nine times out of ten. Also, this bishop is getting skewered. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So in order to set up this bishop attack, here's what I got to do. I got to move this rook here, then move the bishop in. Wow. Tricky. Tricky move from uh, black there. And also, they pick up a free bishop. So smart move by them, because I was defending that with the... Uh, ooh, maybe not good fundamentals by me. But one thing I will do... Let's just move this pawn. Yeah. Oh, I guess my king is under check. Excuse me. Uh, slide. Great move for them there to find that fork, by the way. Very good. But I feel like we can still take this queen pretty easily. Also, they're like really behind. Look at all these. Not in play. 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 Nothing they have is in play. So that's the good part for us. The bad part for us, there is no bad part. Okay, getting the bishop in play. That's smart. 
unfortunately, like I said, they ain't got time to do whatever they want to do. It's uh, do whatever I want to do. And I want you to move your queen. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is start to watch out for queen like forks and x-ray attacks by the queen, actually. Because uh, I feel like we got this thing almost trapped. It's going to escape over here to A3 again. So what I was trying to do earlier is move that there. I guess that bishop is dangerous on that diagonal. Huh. Well, out of an abundance of caution, let's create a... Hmm. Let's create... No, what am I saying? This queen's not safe, dude. <laughs> All I had to do is... I can just move my queen right here. Like, what, what are you going to do about that? <laughs> you going to go here? No. You going to go here? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. You going to go here? I don't know. You going to take that pawn? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> good good pawn good move uh let's just attack the uh queen again yeah oh boy um actually do i want this bishop on this diagonal yes actually because there's quite a lot more space there and uh hmm or do i want the rook lifted up man so many great moves. Uh, let's just move this here. I got a good feeling about that one. We're going to get this queen. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> this thing loves hopping around. Let's just go right here. Yeah, <laughs> You know, <laughs> you, know you, you can't run forever. I mean, there you go. So now you can go over here, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Go over here. We're just forcing this thing to dance around. Now, what's it attacking? I guess here, here, here. I mean, yeah, it's got some opportunity. Do I care? No. We just move here. I mean, what are you going to do? Slide down here, slide here, 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 slide there. Okay. <laughs> Pretty good move, actually, because I don't have anything attacking the dark squares. And also, my rook can't really attack that. One thing I can do, though, is uh, very tricky. Uh, yeah, you just slide it there, attack with the queen, and just go from there. Hi! Would you like to interrupt my stream today? <laughs> no, just kidding. What's up, nephew? All right. Glad to have you aboard. So, what we're going to do... Because we're not going to care about the game. And we're just going to switch to this. And we're going to switch to this. And we're going to resign. Because uh, being an uncle comes first. So we're going to quit the game that we were winning. And there you go. All right. Hey, I just quit the game for you. What's really on your mind, man? Talk to me. Oh, really? Okay. Would you mind, would you mind staring directly into the camera? The FBI can know, know who's making Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, now, now, now. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, good morning. Can I help you with anything? No, I, I didn't think so. <laughs> By the way, uh,
All right, I'll be following you. You're good. I'm putting on my shoes. An adult. One sec. We ain't having that kind of. Uh uh. Mama ain't here, so I'm going to act up. Okay. We'll see how long that lasts. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see how long that lasts, buddy. Okay. I am in here. I regret to inform you, you were under new management, sir. Now, Ellie, I will deal with you in personally. Yes, I took my medicine, and I hope they burn in hell. I'm tired of these mother on this mother plane. All right. This kid's talking about skipping the bus stop. Something he's never done in his life. Wait till mama gets it. Now. Okay. I hope you won't time. Cool people.
Alrighty. Sorry about that. I had to be an uncle for 15 minutes. <laughs> that was fun. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Duty calls. <laughs> All right. If you're wondering about the behind the scenes, my nephew threatened to, and I quote, skip school. So you know what I did? <laughs> I made sure he didn't. And if you see me throughout stream making uh, periodic phone calls, that's what it's about. So this nephew, right? You guys have seen all the nephews on the channel. Which is why I don't mind talking about this. I'm kind of glad I started streaming. <laughs> Here, here's a question for you guys. Because you guys have met two of my four nephews. Which one do you think threatened to, and I quote, skip school? And which one, <laughs> maybe it was both of them. Let's throw that in there. And which one... <laughs> Did I make sure didn't? And number two, how did I make sure they didn't skip school? I don't know. Maybe you overheard some of the nonsense that was happening yeah, 15 minutes ago. Maybe not. Maybe you just got an educated guess. Yeah. yeah, this is a question for all the parents in chat, you know, who, especially the parents who have been following the, ne the nephew streams. Yeah, leave your comment down below. Uh, parents, or so-called, you notice how people online do, uh, people online, right? I've noticed this recent trend. Let's switch to just chatting for a second. Oh, I am in just chatting. Great. So people online, and not just people online, people in the sports world, people in uh, media, people in, just people. They like to be... You ever notice like someone talking about Russell Wilson? And I'm just throwing that name out there because he's easy to pick on. You ever notice someone like Tony Romo playing amateur psychologist? <laughs> no, 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 don't get me wrong. I like Tony Romo. You like Tony Romo. I like Al Michaels. You like Al Michaels. But uh, these guys didn't get their doctorates in psychology. Or did they? I don't know. Maybe you did. And it's just, you know, some don't really. That's true. But one thing I do know is that to conduct any psychological exam, you must have one thing present. Uh, that person in front of you, in person. In order to conduct a full psychological breakdown and a psychological evaluation, professionally, professionally. By the way, you may be wondering why I'm using air quotes when talking about psychology. <laughs> uh, the truth is, it's both an inside joke and... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you won... Uh, by the way, uh, Ryan, that joke is for you. So my buddy Ryan, right? He, uh, yeah, he got his degree in psychology. And, you know, it's one of those jobs where you're not allowed to talk about it. Good guy. Goes to church. Good guy. Has a family. Uh, has three kids. Uh, has a perfect <clears throat> wife. Perfect marriage. Has uh, kids that are the same age as my nephew's. Uh, I'm not going to say which his kids are to prevent doxing because he lives in Wisconsin and his kids are the following age, 15, 16, 17. Sound familiar? Okay. So we have a lot in common. You know, now, now, now the nephews aren't my kids. I just want to, although they sure as hell feel like it. I just want to throw that out there. First of all, the nephews aren't my kids. That's number one. Second of all, psychology. <laughs> 
So, <laughs> one thing I have noticed out here on the internet that is trending is amateur psychology. Oh, boy. Let me tell you what, guys. You guys need to stop picking on Russell Wilson. Now, I don't know why his name's the first name that came to mind with the psychology discussion. Let's psychoanalyze Russell Wilson. Evaluation over. Russ, here's my new message to you. I'm glad you heard my message from seven streams ago. Congrats on beating your demons. Uh, you're welcome. You watched the stream, aka heard my prayers, and you overcame. That is the true definition of a hero. And you know what, Russ? Let's get let's give an applause, not not fake applause. Let's give a real hand of applause to Russ. Russell Wilson, that true applause, by the way, yeah, psychologize that one. Russ, that true applause goes out to you, my friend. Thank you for watching the stream. Thank you for praying. And thank you most of all for persevering. These are four important things that Russell Wilson's had to do. He's had to endure, persevere, get picked on, persecuted. You could almost say he's persecuted. Yeah, he could, in a weird kind of way. Not not for his like beliefs or anything, but he's persecuted for his failures. This is true. Yeah, now, once you become a Super Bowl champ, uh, the stink kind of stays with you. What do I mean by that? The stink. This would be a good question for Eli Manning. Attention, Eli Manning. After you won your second Super Bowl, right, and Eli knows where I'm going with this, and Eli watches the stream. Hey, Eli, love your brother Peyton. You and... It's not that you're bad, Eli. It's that you're in the same division as the Dallas Cowboys, who, yeah, sadly, my dad brainwashed me. I'm sorry, Eli. I was brainwashed wrong. You know, to like the Cowboys. Okay. So Eli's a good quarterback. He's a Hall of Fame quarterback. He's a two-time Super Bowl attending and winning quarterback. Can Russ say he's won two? No. I think Russell Wilson's jealous of Eli. He knows he should have won two. Yeah, the truth is. <laughs> oh, man. Everybody talks about that play. You know, the Malcolm Butler, you know. Some legacies are made, some legacies are stolen. Right, Russ? Ah, you feel me on that one, Russ. But today, we're going to praise Russ. I think throwing it was the right decision. And here's why. You know, on the second and goal, or whatever it was. Super Bowl. Beast Quake. You know, Beast Quake's rolling. Why not just hand it off? Okay. Let's get down to brass tacks here. Is a running game, any running game, effective without mix and match? Creativity. No. Also, even Marshawn Lynch, the beast, can testify to this. Does the running game tighten up in the red zone? And I'm, I'm by tighten up, I mean the defense calls in, you know, three extra linemen. Yes, yes, they do. Every defense does it. Bill Belichick's defense does it. My coach's, you know, boys club defense does it. My uh, junior highs, you know, Wisconsin Red Devils team does it. The Washington football team does it. 
The Carolina football team does it. The Tennessee football team does it. If you have the ball with the first and goal at the five or less, you are coached. Listen, America, you are coached as a defensive coordinator. Hey, you know, these guys are getting some pretty easy runs, you know, up and down the field. How about we bring in three second string tackles? Okay. So we've covered the what, the if, the where, the when, the how. Now, nah, 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 uh, just for argument's sake, do I think the beast would have been ultimately stopped? Yes. On the second down play. Or first down or whatever it was. Let's say they hand the ball off to the beast whenever they say hand it off and then he gets stopped. Stopped. You know, for no yards. I'm not saying they would have backed him up by one or two yards. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> it is Marshawn Lynch after all. Okay, so let's get real. But no, no, no. They just blitz the A gap and the B gap and say, oh, you know, this Marshawn Lynch guy's kind of killing us. How about we how about we double A gap blitz and just pray? You know. I have a feeling the Patriots defense. I have a feeling Bill Belichick says like the one word to get him to kick it in gear. AKA, if you don't mm, that double leg, you better do it or mm, you're going to cost me some rings. And then you're going to have to hear from me, Bill Belichick, about how you, defender number 1572HBKY, didn't double blitz the A gap because I clearly told you to double blitz. I'm, I'm Bill Belichick. Look at the rings. Look at the rings. Catch the rings. Trust me. Bill Belichick. I can imagine that was the conversation. You know, if... And again, Bill's... What I like about Bill Belichick is he's not only the smartest defensive coach, not offensive. We, we clearly see this guy doesn't know how to draft offensive. But he does know how to coach offensive talent. You know, Tom Brady. I mean, it does take some, I guess, genius of madness to coach Tom Brady. What do I mean by that? Well, this is kind of comparable to the Russ problem. The Russ's problem is he went to two Super Bowls, and now everyone thinks, oh, hey, this guy's a made man. He went to two Super Bowls. You know, just like Eli. Hey, Eli, he won two Super Bowls early. You know, in his career, same for us, same for us, same for us. Russ Wilson won, you know, Super... No, 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 he attended two, two Super Bowls very early in his career. Oh, are we going to see three from Russ? Are we going to see four? Are we going to see... You see, NFL fans, and I say this with all the love in my heart, are some of the greediest, brainwashed... <laughs> people in existence. And they're very hopeful. Let's throw out a positive word. They're they're hopeful, hopefully, arrogantly, egotistically brainwashed. How do I know this? I could pull out any jersey my father owned that is a Cowboys jersey. I could pull out the Tony Romo right now. You know how much that Tony Romo jersey's worth? It's right there in the closet. I, I could go pull it. I, I don't need to pull it out <laughs> to prove my point. <laughs> the point is, oh, my pizza's ready. Hang on. Let, let's stay on topic. Let's stay on topic.
All right. All right, we're back, and I didn't forget the topic. Here we go. So here on my Twitch channel, I'm going to name this here. We're going to put the category for Madden. There we go. All right. And here's the topic. Oh, beautiful. Just in time. <laughs> NFL question. Why? All right. Now let's make some creative tags here. That way people will understand what I'm talking about. So let's put in the tags. Ready? NFL. I put the title. Yeah, NFL discussion. Why psychoanalysis is both a good and bad thing. There we go. And, and since we're talking in, about him. And by the way, I am just using him for an example. So... <laughs> Let's let's put uh, Russell Wilson is a, as a uh, uh, you know what I'm gonna put why sexual analysis around Russell Wilson. There we go. Is is a both yeah NFL discussion why so psychoanalysis around Russell Wilson is both a good and bad thing. That's a very good title. That's a YouTube title right there, baby. All right, so we're going to hit done. Nice. And then I'm going to edit the details again. You got to pay attention to the details. Details. All right, then we're also going to add Madden. And we're going to add a tag. Psychology. Yeah, psychology. Great discussion. So back to these amateur psychologists. Did you know, fun fact, let's get back into the discussion, okay? Did you know, you guys like statistics? Here's a fun one for you. Did you know the FBI, it's the FBI, it ain't me. The FBI estimates eh, about four out of ten psychologists shouldn't be practicing psychology. Why? Number one. They either don't have their license, two, they're attempting psychology on, what did I just talk about, like an hour ago, I mean 30 minutes ago. They are attempting psychology on unwarranted subjects. What does that mean? The person being psychoanalyzed is not right in front of them, as I said. As I said, now, a couple factors have changed this. You know, we had this whole vid thing in 2020. and. Uh, it kind of started to mutate the standard medical psychological <laughs> practice. Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> you know who you are. And number two, you know your name isn't Ryan. Right, so. You guys might have noticed that to prevent doxing on my channel, I rename dates, people, places. Lives, wives, etc. Yeah, so, uh, fun fact the names Ryan or his wife, because I'll probably name drop his wife, uh, Angela. 
throughout this stream. Oh, we'll call her Angela. Yeah, yeah. We'll call the psychologist Ryan. We'll call him. Yeah, that's that's a little more. And we'll call me Flood. Yeah, let's let's just throw that out there. Uh, but Russell Wilson's Russell Wilson. He's a celebrity, so he gets to keep his name. So does Eli Manning and uh, who else did I name? Tom Brady, Bill Belichick. They get to keep their names. You know, for the purposes of this discussion. And Tony Romo, he gets to keep his name. Also, Dad gets to keep his name of Dad because that's, you know. If you can figure out who my dad is from my face, great. Yeah. Buy some of his product. I don't know. <laughs> he is a businessman. And I use that in the same terms as I use psychology. So, yeah, four out of ten, huh? FBI says, probably shouldn't be practicing psychology. What are the other reasons? Eh, malpractice. You know, you got some hot psychologist, let's be quite frank here, <laughs> dipping their hand in the cookie jar. What do I mean by that? They're either stealing money or time or lives. Or they're doing very, very, and again, this is only like, yeah, like less than two thirds of two percent of psychologists. But you know, if you're you're being psychoanalyzed for anything, uh, chances are you're at a pretty vulnerable place. And I don't mean to use that in quotes. No, I literally, literally, if you're being psychoanalyzed by a professional doctor, chances are one of two things have happened. One of uh, ten things have happened. You've had a psychotic break. I I mean, hey, let's just get real here. Um yeah. No bueno. Okay. Number two. You've not had a psychotic break, but you're at the edge of one. Number three. Your wife's at the edge of a psychotic break. But she hasn't had one yet. But who boy, she's headed in that direction, you know. Number four, your wife or significant other or daughter, son, etc. You, you guys know where I'm going. Have had a psychotic break. And so as the mother of, what shall we name the wife in this imag imaginary scenario? Kelly. As the husband of Kelly, you know, imaginary wife, you know. As the husband of Kelly, you're there talking to her psychologist or psychiatrist or whatever. In order to provide light on the situation. Long story short, you're just talking to them because they told you to talk to them. You don't really want to help them. Let's say it's an ex-wife. You know, you don't really care. She's an ex-wife. But you're just providing context for the professional psychologist. Okay, okay, everyone's with me. Okay. Those are like four easy scenarios in which you contact a professional. <laughs> and I say that with the greatest respect, psychologist. No, 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 no. For all of you just now tuning into stream, I'm not telling you, hey, Blood told us to quit seeing our professional psychiatrist, psychologist. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is if you are seeing a psychologist, or psychiatrist, or anyone with a psychological background, chances are it's not for a very good reason. Hey, maybe you were, maybe it was an accident. You know, maybe you were in a car accident. You don't even remember who you are. Happens all the time. And they're just helping you build the pieces back together to uh, yabba dabba do and go about your life in Michigan. Okay. Here's the problem. Again, four out of ten psychiatrists or psychologists, the FBI says shouldn't be, you know, conducting their practice. Here's the problem. All those scenarios I just gave for the professional psychologist put you at a very, 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 hi, sir. How's it going? Flood Mon 14 here. Very vulnerable state of mind. <laughs> Maybe. 
We're talking to uh, Russell Wilson today. Well, actually, we're talking amateur sports psychologists. Uh, plot question. Uh, plot question here, sir. Do you watch the NFL? Should Tony Romo be performing psychoanalyst on Russell Wilson? I think not. Should uh, Al Michaels be performing psychological analysts analysis on? I don't know. Da da da. Who who's a controversial quarterback? Uh, the guy of the Bucks, the Bucks, the Bucks, the Bucks. I can think of his name. Don't tell me his name. He's the Buccaneers quarterback. He won Cleveland a playoff game. Uh, he's very hated. Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield. Okay, okay, Giannis, Giannis. That's fair. That's fair, sir. Should uh Kevin Harlan, the announcer we all know and love, who 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 commentates the the slam dunk slams. Should Kevin Harlan <laughs> psychoanalyze Giannis and um I don't know Damian Lillard's relationship? <laughs> you know, should uh should Jim Nance psychoanalyze the bond between Serena and Venus Williams? No, I don't think so. No, that's uh, that's not how that works. You know, I love Jim Nance. I love him, you know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> did this guy get his degree in psychology? Hey, maybe. I mean, I, I, I don't know everything about, I don't know, and I don't know why I said Jim Nance. I mean, maybe I should have said Phil Sims or, you know, but the the point is made. I think we all get the point. The point is... <laughs> There's a lot of people here on this TV. This, uh, you, you know, this thing over here, this thing that I'm controlling right here. So, I just turned it on. Yeah, there's a lot of people over here. Hey, yeah, I, you know, I feel like Jim Nance is the kind of guy who would have gotten his degree in psychology in, in the background. You know what I mean, sir? Like Jim Nance is such a, uh, <laughs> I love, I love Jim Nance. He's the kind of just dedicated, clever. He is a journalist. And uh, one thing I will say is that as a journalist, a psycholo psychology degree helps you quite a bit. And Jim Nance has had plenty of time to get a professional, sorry, Ryan, degree in psychology. Uh, fun fact, chat. The only reason I'm doing this, you don't need a, need a degree in psychology to be good at psychology. You just don't need one. How do you become good at psychology? It's very simple. Get out there in Walmart. And I literally want you to think, okay, we're going to run an FBI profile on mom full of two shopping carts. What's her life like? What's she going through? Does she hate the screaming and crying? We're literally going to guess a FBI profile on mom with two shopping carts. Now, is it accurate? No. Just do it for fun. Do that. Work at Walmart for five years. Do that for every, every customer, every customer, every customer, every customer. You get in your line for five years for fun and come back to me. You'll quickly discover that you have about a 15% eh, success rate. You know what the average success rate of a psychologist is? You know, for initial diagnosis, it's uh, less than one-third of one-tenth of one percent. That's according to the FBI. Yep, less than one-third of one-tenth of one percent. That's the uh, standard initial diagnostic rate. AKA, it's not very good. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is psychology. <laughs> it's just a bunch of mumbo jumbo. It's an excuse for rich people with a degree to say, hey, I got this degree and I'm going to talk about it. Now, with that being said, I don't want you to skip your psychiatry appointment first thing this morning. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. Good question, sir. We're going to circle back to that one. Now, for everyone who has a psychiatry appointment first thing this morning, I want you to do one thing. I want you to attend your psychiatry appointment because Flood Mod 14 said so. 
I want you to attend the appointment again. I want you to attend your next follow-up appointment. And I want you to attend your next seven appointments. Okay. Because I'm not trying to discredit psychiatrists and psychologists. I'm not trying to discredit them. I would never do that. You know, how many psychologists out here have at least one failed practice? What do you think, sir? I'm thinking all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At least, at least, you know, it takes at least two failed practices to, uh, you know, it's just like the restaurant business. You know how they say in the restaurant business, it takes five fields and you're in? Same with psychologists. It takes at least two lawsuits or two failed practices and you're in. You know, somewhere out there, there's one psychiatrist or one psychologist, professional, got their degree, etc. That has never been sued and has never failed. And to you, I say, give it time. I I mean, that, that's just the fact, sir. I mean, I'm not threatening anyone or... No, no, no. I mean, it's only a matter of time before you diagnose a Karen. You know, you get new patients all the time. Give it a year, give it five years, give it ten years. You're going to diagnose the wrong patient and get sued. I mean, it's just it's just going to happen. It's just going to happen. It it it's going to happen. Okay. Okay. There you go. Okay, thank you, sir. Now back to sports amateur psychologists, right? I'm not going to Google Jim Nance. Does he have his degree in psychology? Psychology? No. But he's kind of been around the bush long enough to, you know, know what kind of questions to ask at the right moment. And that's that's even better than psychology. That's what we call in the psychology business the human fish hook net pool. What does that mean? Well, you see, all humans seek two things, love and validation. Oh, and uh, an opportunity to complain. So three things, actually. But, uh, you know, Jim Nance, I'm just using Jim Nance as an example. It can be Tony Romo, Kevin Harlan. Uh, what are some of the other reporters we've named? Uh, who's the guy that does golf? Um, you. Um, who's the guy that does NASCAR? Um, wait, doesn't Peyton Manning do NASCAR? I heard he does. No, no, he's with ESPN. Eli. Eli does. You know, anyway, I think we all get the point. Uh, if you can do the, uh, fish hook, fish hook net pool, which is, uh, yeah, yeah, sir, sir's got it. Love, opportunity to complain. The way the fish hook Fish hook net pool works. It's very simple. Number one, you tell people, hey, I understand your situation. And I, you know, with all the compassion in my, maybe you even fake a tear. I don't know. You just say, oh, man, I just, oh, that really, that breaks my heart, man. I just, mm, man, I can't believe. They got rid of Chick-fil-A waffle fries and you you just connect with them. You you know what I mean? You just you connect, you fish hook, you connect with them on a spiritual level. Right. And I don't know why I went to Chick-fil-A for that one, but imagine the outrage, sir. Imagine the outrage if <laughs> if Chick-fil-A <laughs> converted from waffle fries to nacho fries from Taco Bell. Imagine the chaos. Imagine the opportunity. Imagine the love for Chick-fil-A turning into hatred. 
But anyway, anyway, you know, no, no, back to what I was saying. That's the hook, right? In psychology. Number one, you say something people latch on to, Chick-fil-A. Okay. Number two, you say something against it, which is, you know, blasphemy, aka the nacho fries comment. Number three, you just, you say the like, oh, you know, the whole, what I just said, oh, how dare they betray the sacredness of waffle fries. And then you just kind of, you connect with them. You ju- you start talking about the sauces. You start talking about the sauces. You start talking about like, oh man, I love waffle fries with sauce number B, you know. Okay, you connect with them. You connect with them. You know, Net. That's the net part of the fish, fish hook. Net, pull, drag, drive. Okay, so that's basic psychology. We all know this. We all love this. We all need this. Okay. What's my problem with amateur sports psychologists? I'll tell you my problem is. Go back 40 minutes and stream and you'll see what it is. Like I said, like I said, sir, and uh, everyone else, and YouTube VOD watchers. Technically, and this is very technical, you're not supposed to perform psychology or any analysis on someone unless they're sitting right in front of you. Why? It's to watch their facial reaction. Also, other nonverbal cues like sliding in the chair, fidgeting, you know, they're kind of, they're looking over there, but they're looking at a specific picture on the wall. You can't really tell that in a Skype call. You just can't. You just can't. You know, they're staring at their feet. Okay, maybe you'll be able to tell that in a Skype call. Maybe not. Maybe you'll just think they're sad and looking at the ground the whole time. But if you're there in person, you can clearly see they're playing with the laces on their tennis shoes. You see, that's psychology. That tells you something. If someone's playing with the laces on their tennis shoes, as you're talking to them about a serious issue, it means one thing. They are trying to run away.
Alrighty. All right. Back to the shoelace comment, because I'm I, just to wrap that one up. Yeah. If someone is in a psychiatric evaluation and they're playing with their shoelaces, how do you know it means, hey, nonverbal signal, I want to run away right now. How do you know this? Uh, because that's exactly what I thought. Upon one of my first, you know, psychoanalysis session as a kid, I just started playing with my shoelaces. And what I thought to myself in that session, the first session, you know, number one, here's what I thought. This is a load of barnacles. <laughs> and number two, I'm getting the out of here, doctor. I know that's the psychological state because I was in it. So, uh, there you go, mom and dad. If you're ever talking to your child and they're doing nothing but playing with their shoelaces. Here's what they're subconsciously saying to you. I ain't paying attention. My brain, my spirit has exited stage left. You have no effect on me. And first chance I get, I'm going to run up out of here. And go back to what I was doing. That's what it actually means. You know. Yeah, there are divergent paths to take from there, but there's a difference between running away from the conversation and I want to get out of here. And there are all levels to this, but the primary psychological derivative is run, move, go away. All from a shoelace. What do shoes do? Shoes go on your feet. Okay. Where do shoelaces go? They tie on your feet to help you run faster. Have you ever tried to run in a pair of shoes that happen to have laces? Not flip flops. We're not talking, not high heels. We're talking shoes with laces. If a shoe does have laces, do you run faster with them tied, half tied, or untied? It's not a trick question. I just want to wrap that last point up. Okay. Glad everybody's with me on this one. Okay. That's some good pizza, by the way. Mm. Mm. Oh, man. Okay. Now that I've hit that, let's rewind a bit. So we were talking about if Jim Nance <laughs> should be providing psychological breakdowns on Russell Wilson. Or, you know, Sports amateur psychologists. Okay, we went over the bad. Here's why I think it's bad. Unqualified. Unlicensed. Is Jim Nance licensed? I don't know. Well, let's let's name a few. Is Jim Nance licensed? Tony Romo. Uh, <laughs> who else I named? Steve Kerr, Marv Albert. Um, uh... Uh, what's his name? Stephen A. Smith. Is he licensed? <laughs> uh, who, who else is famous? Uh, Michael Irving. Um, Richard Sherman. Is he like, <laughs> um, uh, oh, what's that one guy everyone hates? Skip Bayless. You think Skip Bayless is a licensed psychiatrist? Hey, maybe. You know, that'd be the ultimate power play. If Skip Bayless, if Skip Bayless Let's just, let's say he's not a licensed psychologist. Let's say he's taking classes right now and nobody knows about it. That'd be the ultimate genius play, Skip. Let me tell you what, Skip Bayless. Let me help elevate your show to the next level. Take one class 
on psychology and fail it. Fail it on purpose. But take vivid notes. And how do you fail a psychology class on purpose? Easily. You out psych the psychology professor. Mm. Got you thinking now, Skip. That's the ultimate power play. Skip Bayless, you want to elevate your show to the next level? Take a psychology class. Don't tell anybody about it. Take a psychology class. Don't tell anybody about it. Take a psychology class. Don't t even tell your wife about it. Fail it on purpose, even though you have an A. And don't tell anybody. Let the media, you know, report <laughs> about it. Like the media tells the truth anymore. I mean, let them get all the facts wrong, Skip. Let them get all the... Let them psychoanalyze why your psychology class failed. And then, uh, yeah, 10 years later, come up with a memoir and say, hey, you know this Flood Mon 14 guy? He's nuts. I had an A-plus in the class. And you show, you show your work. You show your work, you know, where the teacher had an A and, you know, starred your w w homework or whatever. And you just say, hey, he told me to bomb the final on purpose. Okay. <laughs> Makes for a great story, Skip. It really does. Okay. Think about it. Pray about it. I know you're a man of prayer. Pray about it. Pray about it. Pray about it again. If you have a dream about it, uh, you probably should do it. Oh, and uh, don't tell your wife about it. I can't stress that enough. A psychology class is between you and God. It's got nothing to do with your wife. Or your business partners. Or, yeah. If you want to take a psychology class, that's between you and God. Oh, that goes to everyone, not just Skip. Everyone out there. I Yeah, that's psychology class between you and God. Or you and uh, whatever you believe. So, you know, no, it, it's no one's business. It's no one's business if you fail. It's no one's business if you succeed. It's no one's business if you got your doctorate. Okay? It's no one's business. No one. Take the psych class and fail it on purpose. Especially if you got an A plus in it. Especially if you got an A plus. Fail it. Intentionally. Best decision you'll ever make. Alrighty, well, we already covered my reasons why I think it's bad. Let's go over the review. Unlicensed, 4 out of 10, shouldn't be doing it. Uh, we've already kind of went over the the reasons why they shouldn't be doing it. One big reason that, you know, TOS, I got to be careful of TOS. So, remember those vulnerable states I was talking about earlier? And I, I, I really shouldn't laugh at this part. Let me, let me get point blank serious and look at the camera. So remember how I was talking about like, oh, your wife, ha your ex wife had a psychotic break, and you don't care about your ex wife anymore, but you're still talking to this psychotherapist, right? The reason I dropped ex wife, you know, a lot of personal. Hey, I had an ex wife who went to see a shrink. Okay, did I want to be there? No. How long did it take the uh, psychoanalyst shrink? <laughs> it's so funny how we call him a shrink. <laughs> I just think of the uh, magic card in Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, I did Kado Shutsuku, you know. And the, uh, it's so weird that that card combos with Crush Card Virus. Huh. There's a bridge there, like a small world bridge, as a Yu-Gi-Oh player. 
that I'm not thinking of. There's a clever joke there. Shrink plus Crush Card plus Psychoanalyst plus Small World Bridge plus memes. There's a meme there somewhere. Internet, get on it. I, I ain't got time. But let me get serious. Let me get serious. So, yeah, let's just put it out there. The dark side of science. Right, so uh, the very dangerous thing to be, number one, picking through somebody's brain. Why do I say that? Well, number one, your memories are yours and yours alone. These are facts. Your life experiences are yours and yours alone. These are facts. Every human on this planet has a unique story. And in fact, I'm going to write that in chat. And I finished it off there in chat. Every human being on this planet has a unique story. And this part is actually true. I'm not going to air quote this one. That only they, the human, can tell from their perspective. For example, I'll tell you guys my life story. Okay? I got one ex-wife. Oh, sorry, sir. <laughs> I have five ex-wives, two kids, one happy marriage, six not so happy. Oh, and I've only been divorced three times, but yet I've had five ex-wives playing that one. You may say, where's my calculator? This ain't adding up. Let me remind you. There are some states such as Utah. Okay. I need not say any more. Okay. You know. Am I a Mormon? No. Not anymore, man. <laughs> Got some of you thinking with that one. Is he joking? Uh, is it... <laughs> what? Cheers. Here's how we're going to tie it all together. All the nonsense I've been talking about. If I was Russell Wilson. <laughs> now, this is a very hard thing. You know, as an expert psychologist or psychiatrist or an expert psychoanalytic. One thing you're always able to do. Is throw yourself in someone's shoes. This is a fact. Now, I don't have Russell Wilson sitting right here in front of me. Hey, Russ, you'd like to. I have services. Uh, I have private. Um, you know, we abide by HIPAA laws. So if you want to talk to me one on one as your psychiatrist. Well, I don't like that word. Counselor. Hey, I believe in God, too. I know you believe in God. I mean, you had to believe in God to win that game. So, hey, maybe your wife prayed for you. Anyway, um, here's my offer to you, Russ. I will offer to counsel you one-on-one -on -one 
for an hour. You know the Dr. Phil show? It'll kind of be like that, except uh, I don't get paid as much. And it won't be televised. Oh, yeah, that's unless you want it to be. You know, I'm just throwing that out there. And it'll be a one-time session, you know, just like Dr. Phil. <laughs> sorry, 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 Doctor Doctor Phil. I I, <laughs> I respect you. <laughs> hey, hang on, hey, hang on, Tim, Tim, cut. We're filming. Roll it. Okay. <laughs> sorry, I got to get out this preemptive apology to Doctor Phil. No, 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 no. But seriously, Doctor Phil, you help a lot of people, and you've helped me. How have you helped me? Well. You've helped me realize I don't want to become a TV psychologist. That's for damn sure. <laughs> Imagine doing that for a living. Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> I mean, man, I love you, Dr. Phil, but oh boy. You stepped in it, brother. You stepped in it so bad, you can't even step out. You done got stuck in a mud pie of people needing your help constantly there, brother. And now you can't even tell which way's up. Well, got news for you, partner. The requests ain't gonna stop coming in just because I said so. By the way, do you guys think uh, Dr. Phil will retire today? I don't think so. I predict he'll tire, retire eh, when the money dries up. Maybe he'll, like, train his, like, son. or You know, I could see that as a transition show where he, uh, <laughs> you know, just he just brings in, like, a distant relative, right? Let's say it's his stepdaughter's dinosaurs, Barney's cousin's brother, sister's wife-in-law. And, yeah, equate that if you want. And uh, he just says, oh, hey, yeah, this is my... Uh, Brothers, sisters, daddies, babies, dinosaurs, mama's second cousins removed, babies, dinosaurs, mama's daughter's aunt. And, you know, secretly, she's been training to get her degree in psychiatry. And she's watched my show since she was, you know, two, because <laughs> it runs in the family. And she's going to be your new host. I'm 82 years old. I'm kind of tired. Retired. Hey, yeah. Dr. Phil here. And uh, what's his tagline? What's his motto? Um, We'll be right back. Cut to commercial. Boom, boom, boom. Da -da -doom, doom, doom. No, no, no. He does have a, a tagline that he ends with every episode. Not every episode, but, you know, 90% of episodes. Uh, What's his motto? I don't know. Live long and prosper. Sure, let's go. With that. <laughs> That's not his tagline, but uh, I did it used to be. Did it used to be? Hang on, hang on. Let me access the memory brinks. Huh. Oh, we'll come back to that one. Anyway, attention, Doctor Phil. <laughs> no, sincerely, since seriously, I respect everything you do, and you've helped a lot of people. I don't even think Dr. Phil should uh, psychoanalyze Russ. You know, TV analyze. And that's saying something. My standards are pretty high. Okay. That's number one. Now, is Dr. Phil, this should really, really put a stamp on my uh, morning discussion here. Is Dr. Phil technically, let's throw that out there, technically, is he technically qualified to psychoanalyze Russell Wilson and why his, why his throwing sucks? Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, here's the things Dr. Phil can psychoanalyze on Russ. Number one is marriage. I know nothing about his ma marriage to Sierra. I do know that it exists. Okay, step two. His uh, kids, you know, how long, how well they're being raised. I'm not picking on you, Russ. I'm just, you're just the example. I mean, I could be talking about any quarterback, like uh, Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield. 
you know, could Dr. Phil analyze Baker Mayfield and like why he, you know, lost a step, why he's not throwing as well, why he sucks, you know? Sure, sure. Dr. Phil, you know, Dr. Phil has his licenses. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Doctor Phil. Couldn't say that with a straight face. Uh, take two. Okay. Yeah, Doctor Phil's a professional. He's helped a lot of people. He has his licenses. He deserves to psychoanalyze Russ. Has Doctor Phil ever thrown a pass in his life? Probably to his boys. Has he ever made an NFL team? Didn't think so. So my point here is <laughs> we have two ends of the spectrum. Right. Hey, Flood, who better to psychoanalyze a quarterback than a former quarterback? Okay, I got news for you, Tony Romo Jr. Tony Romo, how many Super Bowls have you been to? Tony, this isn't a trick question. How many Super Bowls did you take the Dallas Cowboys, the team you were the quarterback, and I use that word loosely, Tony. Tony! Oh, Tony. Oh, boy, Tony. They're losing. <laughs> Sorry, that was a Tony the Tiger joke for you kids. No, but seriously, uh... Hey, Tony, I got a question for you. How many Super Bowls you been to, eh? eh? How about you go to a Super Bowl where I bust your kneecaps? Okay, that was a New York joke. I'm not actually going to. You're retired. There's no way you can go to a Super Bowl. Ah, it's not true. Tony Romo, here's a fun fact for you guys. Tony Romo retired early. If he unretired and played for the Tampa Bay Bucks as the third-string quarterback, do you think they, they can make the playoffs this year? I do. You may say, well, well, he's in the broadcast booth. He's got a good deal. Why would he? Hey, listen, man. You never lose your arm talent. You never lose your processing as a quarterback. Right, Tony? You feel me on that? Tony, you know I'm telling the truth. You got Chris Godwin and uh, what's the other guy's name? You got two all-stars at wide receiver. Why are you holding back the Buccaneers? Go, go try out for fourth string. And call me in the morning. Ah, you can broadcast for CBS next year. They'll have you back. They can't afford to lose you. Yeah, just be fourth string and uh, see what happens. <laughs> you know, the mid-season signing deadline isn't until... I'm just saying, Tony. I'm just saying. That'd be the ultimate career comeback move. Guy disgraced... By All Star <laughs> Stack Fresk. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry, sorry, Tony. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Tony. I even I couldn't keep a straight face with that. <laughs> sorry, sorry. All Star Deck. <laughs> okay, Dak, man to man, I love you, but uh, you're not a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Let's get real. Not yet. <laughs> sorry sorry let, let me propose it again tony with the without laughing with all the seriousness in my heart here's the headline former disgraced all-star america's qb at eh, tony romo goes from disgraced by dak to semi-retired, too injury-prone, to broadcast booth, working on his health behind the scenes for four years, still keeps an IQ in the game, and decides to become the Tampa Bay Buccaneers' fourth-string quarterback. Hmm. In order to have a good Spirit of competition. Ah, uh, yeah. NFL world likes that. With Baker Mayfield. Uh, 
uh, promises to return to CBS Broadcasting Booth up on end of contract with Bucks. One year deal worth, uh, I don't know, $2.5 million. Okay. Hey, hey, Tony, 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 seriously, Tony, Tony, what have you got to lose, man? You never won, you never even made it to a NFC championship. You could write that wrong right now, and you and I both know it. The problem isn't your talent. The problem is you happen to be... Drafted by what we call a cursed franchise. Like the Detroit Lions. And that's okay, Tony. We realize it's not your fault. And I mean this with all the love in my heart. Consider my offer. It's not as insane as it sounds. The Bucks defense is good. Chris Godwin and that other guy I can't think of are good. Plus your fourth string. <laughs> what are the odds Baker Mayfield gets injured? You know, come playoff time. Well, to be fair, there are eight more weeks in the season. And the last time Baker completed a season was... With the same team was, uh, hmm. Boy, I think he won a playoff game. Yeah. So, all right, we've gotten that out of the way. Here's the, here's the point, guys. <laughs> We've covered both ends of the spectrum, right, of this discussion, which I kind of like. Should Dr. Phil analyze Russell Wilson? Sure, he can analyze half. You know, the boring half. <laughs> the the half the fans don't care about, you know, like, oh, man, <laughs> I got to look at how you're raising your kids. Is your marriage good? Oh, man, you're having a lot of fights. Yeah. I don't care about all that drama. <laughs> Listen, man, Dr. Phil, here's the facts, bro. Every marriage has drama. Nah. Let me correct myself. I'm a professional psychiatrist, psychologist. I'm a professional, professional, just like you. Okay, let's give the real number, Dr. Phil. 82% of all marriages have drama. And fact is, you never know what's going on behind closed doors. Let me tell you guys a cold, hard fact. And I know it's a fact because I witnessed it myself. Let's say you have a preacher. It's going to be hitting a little below the belt. So if you're a preacher, you might want to click off stream right now. Let's say you know me. I'll give you five minutes to click off the stream right now. All right, you got five minutes. If you're a preacher or any person of authority, you got five minutes to click off stream. Go. All right, time's up. <laughs> Let's say you're a preacher with a perfect marriage. Uh-huh. Is that really how it is? Uh-huh. Now, I'm not saying every preacher has a bad marriage. That's not what I'm saying. I, I would never say that. That's, hey, that's statistically very unlikely. Okay. One thing I will say. <laughs> you never know what's going on behind closed doors. You never know. I'm telling you, man. These people in Wisconsin, I'm about to talk about, 
Man, did they put on a good show. And by show, I mean show. You guys know what PDA is? Public Display of Affection. I'm telling you, man. This couple I'm thinking of, let's just call them... Uh, <laughs> Almost called them Bert and Ernie. No, now let's call this couple Bert and Ernista. This couple I know of, who, who, yes, are preachers. Both of them were preachers, male preacher and female preacher. Bert and uh, Ernista sounds a little cliche. Bert and Isabel. Bert and Isabel. <laughs> Man, they had. Everybody fooled, man. Everybody. 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 Everybody except for me. You know why they didn't fool me? Well, I cheated. I happened to be uh, friends with the preacher's kid, and, you know, <laughs> he told me what was really going on. My point is, don't let people out here tell you that uh, what's good. Nope, nope. Delete it. You want to know how I know a marriage is good? I hear no church gossip about it. That's how I know it's good. Oh, I do hear church gossip about it. Okay. I don't hear it for very long. Or all the gossip is disproven. All the gossip comes from one source. <laughs> you know how, like, in church, you always have that one person who's always lying? And it's the weirdest thing, because I'm pretty sure we're not supposed to deceive others. Is thou shalt not lie? Is that one of the Ten Commandments? I don't, is it? Hang on. Let me let me Google the Ten Commandments here. <laughs> I've forgotten. I've forgotten. Hang on. Okay, here there are the Ten Commandments. And then I'll go back to my story. Uh, yep, thou shalt not kill, not adultery, thou shalt not steal. Honor your father and mother. Okay. Remember the Sabbath, keep it holy. It's, uh, how many is that? That's one, two, like five. Huh. Uh, where are the other five? No other gods before me. That's pretty important. In fact, that's like the first commandment. That's pretty... Yeah, you shall not have any other gods before me. That's pretty... Thou shalt not make it into the any graven images. Oh, yeah, that's kind of like... Those are the top two, so... Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Mm, that's number three, so... Just throwing that out there. Those are pretty... Uh, those top three are pretty... Uh, hmm. I do number three all the time, and I probably shouldn't. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'll just be like, oh my God. I should really cut that from my vocabulary. Okay. You know. Uh, you shall not murder is number six. Okay. Um, the last two. Oh, I guess that, that whole lying thing kind of is in here, but kind of isn't. You shall not bear false wit witness against your neighbor. What does that mean? Well, fa false witness is basically lying. It's lying through manipulation. It's a very uh, false witness is kind of very a very specific form of lying that's intended. And finally, ten is that you shall not covet. Okay, but yeah, bearing false witness that's uh, that's very specific. It's not like white lying. Like white lying is just like, oh, what color is the sky? Uh, it's maranta. Is that a color? It's uh, it's pink, even though it's bright and 
blue outside. You see, that's that's like a white lie. Is that bearing false witness against the neighbor? No, it's talking about the sky. Anyway, back to my point about the uh, perfect marriage here. Yeah, a whole lot of that, uh, man, that uh, that uh, commandment there, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Now, did they do that directly? Kind of, yeah. They're toward the end, toward the end of their uh, eventual divorce. Yeah, 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 they kind of did. Yeah, they kind of did. In fact, they really did. In fact, they whole lot of did. They did a whole lot of that uh, thou shalt not do commandment. Yeah, that's interesting. But, you know, toward the beginning, it was mostly just putting on airs. You know, putting a false image out there. Of a perfect, sorry, <laughs> marriage. I don't mean to make light of these people or make fun of them. But you can't help but see the truth. You know, 20 years later. Um... What's funny is a lot of people are going to know who I'm talking about. Maybe some of you won't. I mean, I do attend a lot of churches in the area. I just want to throw that out there. Mm, how many of them engage in PDA? You know, pastors and pastoress. Uh, about eight of them. So, you know, currently. How many of them in the, in the past engaged in PDA? Hmm. About 75. So yeah, I could be talking about anybody. But anyway, Bert and uh, what I call her, <laughs> yeah, Isabella or whatever. A lot of PDA. Yeah, yeah, perfect marriage. Yeah, you know, they got, uh, you got the wife, you got the husband, you got the four kids, you know, perfect. Two boys, two girls. Okay, let's get down to brass tacks here. And let's talk about what was really going on in that marriage. Just to illustrate my example about why we shouldn't psychoanalyze Russell Wilson or his marriage. <laughs> like I said, the Dr. Phil side of it, every marriage has problems. Okay, let's say you're not married. Every, uh, <laughs> every relationship longer than a week. <laughs> has problems. These are facts. Yeah, maybe some of them are slight problems, like, oh man, I stubbed my toe last week, and my wife didn't offer me any ice. My uh, girlfriend, wife, partner, spouse, significant other. All right. Yeah, I stubbed my toe last week, and my girlfriend didn't offer me any ice. Slight problem. Let's fast forward a year. I stubbed my toe on the same couch again, only this time, I got mad about it. Let's fast forward another two years. I stubbed my toe a third time on the same couch where we had our first fight. I've had it up to here with my significant other, and now I'm not only stubbing my toe, I'm tripping on my toe and in the process, grabbing my keys, which are by the front door, and I'm getting in my car. Oh, they chased me downstairs, huh? Now they want to show concern. Uh, you see where the psychology's going? You know, it builds up. It, it Hey, psychological attachments build up over time. These are facts. A mountain of hate isn't sown and grown in a day. That what you show... You shall also reap. Okay. If you sow one seed of apathy in a relationship, let me tell you what. Watch out. It can be apathy about anything. It can be apathy about a step toe, a talk about work. That's pretty common. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, some people just like to vent when they get off work. And, you know, they want you to forget the entire conversation. That's fair. If that's you, you need to point out on day one of your relationship with your wife, significant other, spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, etc. You need to point out, hey, I'm the kind of person that likes to 
blah, 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 blah. We're going to I don't want you to take notes. I want you to take notes and then burn the page. This is my uh, this is my cigarette lighter. I'm lighting. Burn the page after I vent because it's literally a vent. I don't want any feedback. Make this clear on day one. I'm telling you, husbands, this will make your marriages 99% better. Burn the page. Do not bring up, oh, weren't you mad about the same thing last week? No, 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 that's not how this works. You burn the page. Every, <laughs> every vent work day is a new day. You pretend, as my wife, it's an agreement. You're my wife, partner, spouse, significant other, partner in crime, etc. You, as the partnee in crime, pretend that I didn't say the same thing I said last week or two weeks ago or five weeks ago or five years ago. You... As my significant other, allow me to just cycle and cycle and rinse and repeat blah and blah and blah. And you burn the page. You take notes and you burn the page every night. You burn the page. Say that on day one, husbands. Say that on day one, wives, working wives. I know like quite a few women work now. Some of them even work three jobs. I'm serious. Women who are working, say that to your house husband. Say that to your house girlfriend. Say that to your housewife. Women who are working, say that to your housewife. You know, your wife who's waiting on you. Say that to your wife who's waiting on you. Working women who are working three jobs as a single mom. Say that to your housewife who's waiting on home at you because you're married to a lovely female. Say that to her first thing. First thing. First thing when you get in a new relationship. You say to her, hey, <laughs> I like to vent and blah, 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 and I want this, and I want you to burn the page. You say vent and burn. Make it pretty simple. If they need step-by-step -step instructions, you give them step-by-step. -step. Most people will know what you're talking about. You say, hey, I'm a vent from worker and burner. They will understand what you're talking about because all of us do it. Whether we want to or not subconsciously, most of us do it. Most of us vent at least a little bit about work. Some of us write a diary. Okay. That's fair. As the significant other, you have permission to do one thing. Read the diary page and then immediately burn it. If you read it, if you allowed me the privacy of my diary, Okay. I'll know you didn't read it. And I trust you as the significant other to follow all the rules. All the time, every time, all the time. If you cheat on any of the rules, we're going to have a family meeting. There you go. I just I just helped save 99% of your marriages. You're welcome. Anyway, back to the couple I was talking about. Perfect on the outside, not so perfect on the inside. What was going on? What made that not so perfect? Well, <laughs> a lot of rule violations of the kind of thing I was just talking about. Yeah, you know, he would get home from church, work, then about work, and she would take notes, you know, the wife, and he would ask her, hey, burn the page, forget about, forget about it. Hey, let's pretend this never happened. You know, this conversation, eh, eh, delete it, man. ba ba da ba da Okay, this husband wasn't perfect either. Let's get that clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, despite his PDA and his uh, hugs with all four kids in public, you know, 
by the playground, you know, there at the front door where everyone could see the hugs. <laughs> this guy was the most selfish, arrogant asshole. He's an ex pastor. I can say that. Asshole I've ever met. Now, did he help a lot of people as a pastor and as a man of God? You better believe it. Yeah, this guy helped all kind of people. You know, find God. Nothing wrong with that. Was he a shit husband? You better believe it. Did he choose his work over his marriage? Yeah. I don't like to go there, but... You know. I'm sorry, I really shouldn't laugh. I mean, this guy had it rough, man. But he had his flaws. Now, the wife. Let's psychoanalyze her. There's no need to. She made it pretty point blank to the point obvious what she was doing. And anyone with half a brain, even a six-year-old, could tell one thing. She was philandering. A.K.A. Committing. Uh, this part. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Well, okay. Now, there are two kinds of adultery, as we know well in 2023. There is emotional adultery. Much more cunning, much more sophisticated, much more not so by the book. You know, you can tell pretty quickly. When your wife or uh, or husband or husband, let me just throw that or significant other. I want to I want to throw that in there too. When your uh, mate <laughs> isn't spending time with you, it's pretty clear they're spending time not with you. So, uh, yeah, does that necessarily mean they're committing adultery? No, they could be secretly working on a special gift for you. I found that out throughout my uh, five marriages. So. Oh, sorry, six. Didn't forget about you, babe. Yeah, yeah, and my four ex-wives. So, uh, yeah, chances are they're working on a special gift for you, and they're just like beating around the bush in order not to spoil the gift. Okay. Let's say birthday time or Christmas time finally comes and they're still working on a gift for you. Huh. Well, you know, Christmas is close to New Year, so let's... Thanksgiving is close to um, Christmas and Halloween by proximity, so let's, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, let's just kick the can down another month. You know, there's a pretty long gap between New Year's and Valentine's Day. And if you ain't got a birthday between then, I wouldn't wait too long. You know, for the confrontation. Just throwing that out. I don't know who needs to hear that. <laughs> Eli, maybe it's you. Russ, maybe it's you. I don't... Dr. Phil, maybe it's you. I've name dropped a lot. GM Nance, maybe it's you. Tony Romo, it's probably you. <laughs> I'm kidding, Tony. We love you. We love you here. Deshaun Watson is <laughs> okay. Okay, let's let's reel it in here. Let's, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> you know I I try not to name drop certain people, especially if they're involved with some very uh, TOS things, or should I say uh, allegedly? Allegedly, that's the word of the day. Allegedly TOS things. Allegedly, allegedly, innocent to proven guilty. Right in this country, innocent. Allegedly. I didn't forget, Deshaun. You should be proud of me. And also, you should take my marriage counseling. You may say, I'm not married. That's the perfect time to take marriage counseling, brother. All right, anyway. <laughs> so this uh, perfect uh, marriage, right? Preacher. Wife was also a preacher. Two preachers. Perfect. Four kids. Perfect. No, 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 
like I said, I was best friends with the eldest son. They wanted it to look perfect. But he here's the nice part about being friends with the preacher's kid, with the PK. You know, the main man, the oldest son. You know, the oldest son is always there around the house. And, <laughs> you know, he sees who comes, who goes, etc. Oh, hey, buddy. Hey, man. Hey, hey, G, man. Hey, your daddy at church. You praying? All right. Hang up. Hey, G, man. Hey, man. Uh, I'm thinking about having a sleepover. Yeah, man. I'm nine. You ten and a half. What's up? Oh, your mama got company this weekend. <laughs> Is it the uh, Brazens? Hey, man. Hey, wasn't Brother Brazen over last weekend? Man, he sure visits a lot. Yeah, whatever. None of my business, B. None of my business, G. Hey, hey, yo, hey, yo, man, it's uh, it's me here, Club Mind Fourteen again. Yeah, hey, hey, a hey, uh, top son, you know, number one son. Hey, man, I know you're the PK, but uh, I was just thinking, can we have a ball game, you know, football? Yeah, 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 this weekend. Oh, I can come. Oh, well, that's that's a miracle, man. I ain't came in a while. You know, I noticed uh, a few months ago, I was able to visit every weekend. You know, stay the night. We were having some campfires and s'mores and whatnot. Now I can't come. And this is the first weekend I've been in uh 90 days, bruh. Well, I guess I'll see you. I, I wonder if everything's cool. Yeah, I guess I'll check it out when I get there. Blake. Okay. <laughs> and you know, as the friend of the PK, I quickly observe, you know. Yeah, first visit I've had in 90 days. Lots changed in 90 days. Yeah, I'm only a nine-year-old kid, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to say this as politely as I can. You can't unhear certain sounds. Let this be a warning again to all you preachers who clicked off five minutes ago. You can't unhear certain sounds. I'm going to say that again. To all you preachers who clicked back in, because I said click back in at this timestamp, you can't unhear certain sounds. Shall I simulate the sounds? I think not. I think we all know what kind of sounds I'm talking about. And they're not sounds of like, Pastor A fighting with Pastor S B. Now that's not the sound I'm talking about. I'm talking about the sounds of Pastor S B talking with Persona D about subject Epsilon. There are certain sounds <laughs> that, you know, as a ten and a half, nine, eight year old, you know, some people have what they what they uniquely call their first memory. It's a term in psychology we use for a vibrant, pure, just absolute truth of a memory that has no flaws, no biopsy, no hash, no false derivative. It's just a pure, unexplainable, vibrant, just Mmm, you just hear it. me saying the word vibrant memory is literally making me hear. There are some sounds you can't unhear. And me even saying the words vibrant memory are making me hear those sounds right now. That's psychology. That's undeniable. Perfect marriage, huh? Ooh. I don't think so, Tim. Yeah, that's the Tim, my editor over there. <laughs> he's just sitting over there palm facing right now on Discord, and he's laughing his ass off. Because <laughs> he knows. I've talked to Tim about it, and also, I've been in therapy about it for 
How old am I now? Oh, uh, forever? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let that be a lesson to you adults who are... No, let me just let that be a lesson to all adults, not just preachers. There are some sounds you can't unhear. You got to think about what you're doing as an adult out here. Am I saying you can't have fun? Not what I'm saying. Am I saying you can't live? Live your truth, right? Boy, do I hate that phrase. No, that's not what I'm saying. There are some sounds out here. I'm going to type that in chat. Now, the whole point of that vibrant memory tangent is not only to psychoanalyze myself, which you are allowed to do, but also <laughs> the Dr. Phil side. We talked about this. The Dr. Phil side. You know, where Dr. Phil analyzes Russell Wilson or Eli Manning's or uh, Drew Bledsoe's or Baker Mayfield's marriage, relationship, girlfriend, etc. Okay, rule number one, perfect marriage ain't so perfect. Okay. Appear don't judge a book by its cover. Eh? Things aren't always what they seem. Eh? Grass is greener on the other side. Eh? Grass is drier on the other side. Hmm. Never heard of that one before. The hay always burns, or unless it's wet. That cow pie in the pasture tends to tends to churn in the mud. There's so, so many turns of phrases that uh, point to what I'm saying here. Okay, that's fair. The Doctor Phil side is it's fair. It's drama. It's you stick. Here's here's the thing about the Doctor Phil side, the Doctor Phil show. You stick camera in anyone's house. You stick them their cameras in anyone's house, you never know what's going on behind closed doors. I've said that several times this stream. Let me tell you what. You stick cameras in anybody's, and I mean anybody's household here in America, just at random, you're going to find at least one or two things you don't agree with. And that's fine. Attention, Dr. Phil. You're not the father of that household. The father is. Deal with it. Uh, you're also not the mother of that household. Neither is your wife, Miss McGraw, who I respect way more than I respect you. Mainly because she's actually done the work. But, uh, I digress. Um, yeah. <laughs> and by work, I mean work of raising your kids, not work of getting your degree. That degree's all. I would burn that degree right now. And take advice from your wife before I take advice from you. Why? Why, Dr. Phil, am I talking to you, the viewer? Here's why I take advice from your wife. Her life experience directly relates to mine. Everything in her background. Everything she is. Everything she reads. Everything she does. She's more relatable. Despite having the same qualifications as you. You're just far too distant. Sorry, bub. That's the way it goes, you know? Some of us just trust women more than we trust men. Also, I don't like your mustache. What's up with that? Anyway. <laughs> hey, these are just the facts. This is why I don't identify with Dr. Phil, and I wouldn't take one lick of advice from him. Hey, I just respect his... If, you, if you've ever seen his show more than five times, you'll probably grow to, to, to the same feeling I do. You respect the hell out of his wife, and uh, you realize eh, about 30% of it's just entertainment. And it's supposed to be an entertainment show, and that's that's fine. 
But yeah, yeah, seriously. You stick cameras in, I don't know, any preacher's household in this great state of America. You're going to see some very not-so-godlike things. Eh, at least, like, a little bit, you know. You'd be surprised. Hey, maybe you see a perfect, you know, godlike scenario. Okay. What about in the car where there are no cameras? What about in Walmart where Dr. Phil isn't allowed to film? What about in the bathroom in Walmart where, you know, big privacy violation there? What's going on there as he takes a little junior to take a leak? Okay, we're asking the real questions now. You know. <laughs> Perfect marriage, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 but that's just true. I, I respect Dr. Phil's wife more than I respect him. And I can't even think of her name. But, you know, she has more relatable experience. And also, she actually put in the work. You know, both raising their kids and getting her degree. Psychologically. Professionally. Yeah. Anyway. So that's the Dr. Phil side of Russell Wilson. You know, you can analyze his marriage, put cameras in his house. You're probably going to find some kind of drama between him and uh, Sierra. Why? Well, Sierra's never home. Well, I, I don't mean to say that. I mean, hey, she has a job too. Sierra's like an all-world performer, singing star. She's in the studio, man. I mean, you ain't got time to be home. Uh, Russ is never home uh, during football season. So, you got two people who aren't at home. Okay, that's pretty obvious. You know, you stick cameras in their house. Yeah, the times they are home at Thanksgiving and Christmas, they get in a lot of fights. But what you have to understand as a Dr. Phil analyst is all their fights are technically catch-up fights, which are pretty healthy in a marriage, honestly. Yeah, you spend a lot of time on the road, you know, with your football teammates and you're just nothing but guys, you know. You, you see what I mean? That's the nice thing about Russell Wilson is I can relate to this guy uh, because I've been on the road with nothing but guys, nothing but testosterone, and nothing but, hey, we have to win. We have to win. We have to win. We are a team, blah, blah, blah. You're surrounded by guys, all guys, mostly guys. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are a few. Um, the NFL has changed for the better, and there are quite a bit more female voices now yeah, than there were 15 years ago. That's a good thing. <laughs> I tell you what, Russ, though. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. Russ ain't talking to him. No, on a daily basis. Why? Perception is reality. Perception is reality. Let's just say, hypothetically, that Russell Wilson wanted to talk to somebody about his marriage. You know, a female, a friend. Uh-oh, I just said the word, friend. Russell Wilson operates by this clause. And I know why he does, because he's black. I'm black. Let me tell you something, folks. As a black man in a marriage that's healthy, are you allowed to have female friends that are black or white or Latina or other? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it all depends on one factor. Who is your wife? That's it. That's the whole thing. And what are her expectations? <laughs> okay, so we've come to the uh, marriage analysis part of Russ. Let's talk about him throwing the football. Why does he suck? Well, sucking is an innate, inordinate... 
Sucking comes from within. You know, Russ, you had one good game. Okay. I guarantee you next Sunday you're going to throw three interceptions and only score six points. Two field goals by your kicker. Sucking is not a... Sucking is a state of mind. And I'm using the word suck because I know Russ hates to hear that word. Don't hear me out, Russell Wilson. Here's how to not suck. Become someone else. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I forgot we were praising Russell Wilson this stream. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Russ. I'm sorry. That was for comedy. That was for YouTube. That wasn't that wasn't real advice. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Russ. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. Sorry. I'm sorry, Russ. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm officially, I apologize. That was too far. Let me reel it in. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's offer Russ some real advice. Okay, now I don't want to skip skim over that perception is reality thing, but I think we all get it. If you're perceived as a sucky quarterback who throws interceptions, you know, that's how people view you. Russ, if you're viewed as a former football team champion, that's how you're viewed. If you're viewed as a choker in the Super Bowl, that's how you're viewed. You can't control your perception. You can control your reality, though. Let me explain. Okay, so the perception of you by the media, Russell Wilson. Let's go over the first uh, seven weeks, shall we? Wins and losses. Shall I pull them up? Sure. As a matter of fact, I don't need to pull them up. Go to this YouTube channel, and all will be explained to you. I don't have time to explain it. Go to this YouTube channel. Hang on. Okay. Okay, I just linked a video on YouTube, not made by me. This was made by That's Good Sports. This guy's a diehard Broncos fan, okay? And he's documented, well documented, the aborigines, the horrors, the Obama nations, shout out to President Obama. Didn't think I'd skip you, did I? Yeah. The uh, manifestations of, uh, oh yeah, thanks Obama joke. Let's just throw that in there. And by Obama, I mean Biden. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're the same person or something. 
<laughs> hey, hey, Trump, congratulations. Feel free to use that one in the campaign. <laughs> hey, 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 you're welcome. Thanks, Obama. Oh, I mean, Biden. It's like they're the same person or something. Anyway, <laughs> that's a great campaign roast. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, Joe. I, I I'm sure you were asleep. You surely didn't hear me joke about you. Anyway, I, nap time. Go go back to take your nap, buddy, and have some coffee while you're at it. <laughs> Oof, I. All right, enough digging on presidents. We're uh, discussing football because that's uh, topical. <laughs> also, we don't uh, talk about politics on the stream. Very divisive thing, I know. Did you guys know I vote uh, libertarian just about every election? Anyway, anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, check out that series. Um, this guy details all of Russell Wilson's misthrows, failings pedestrian tree, just his pedestrian, lackluster, uninspiring, just disgusting first six weeks of the season. Ugh, almost makes me want to vomit talking about it. But hey, let's not skip over what I said. You can't control the media perception. Russ, this is true. You and I know it's true. How do you know it's true? Well, you want a Super Bowl. You can't do that without good media perception. Well, unless your name's Eli. Hey, congratulations, Eli Manning. You won despite having a stain on your name. Both times. The uh, lesser Manning. The uh, third string Manning. Did you know people were calling Eli the worst Manning? Even though he won two Super Bowls and, like, older brother didn't? What the hell, man? You guys are stupid. <laughs> like, no, no, no. I know you get canceled for saying a lot. You get canceled. People like, okay, don't get me wrong. I realize Peyton Manning was the sergeant, and that's great. People were saying, Peyton, this guy defeated the 19 and 0. Eli Manning, we owe Eli Manning the biggest sports NFL bow down, just a, Arigato sensei. Like, we owe him the largest just, oh, my God. Thank you, bro. Oh, dear God. And then there I go, you know, with the putting God's name in vain. But, no, seriously, thank you, God. I'm legitimately thankful to God that Eli Manning was born. Imagine where Tom Brady says, hey, take that, Dolphins. We won the perfect season. Perfect marriage. All hey, right, Tom. I brought some of you in on that one. Ah, we're connecting all the dots here. Psychology. Yeah. Get get. Hey, hey, Doctor Phil. Why don't you go talk to Tom Brady? After that, t talk to Tony Romo. Tell him to go uh, fourth string for the Bucks. All right, we're starting to connect some dots here in this ram rambling mumbo jumbo. Yeah, yeah, perfect season, perfect marriage, Tom. Why don't you go talk to uh, Dr. Phil McGraw and Dr. Phil McGraw's wife. Why don't you go talk to Tony Romo? Tell him what I said. Fourth string, bucks, one-year minimum deal, $5 million. Next year, you're guaranteed back with CBS. No strings attached. No contract penalty either for Tony. For breaking the CBS contract? No, no contract. In fact, <laughs> him being on a team? That's golden, dude. You get insider information on the Bucks. No, unless their organization prevents leaking, which, you know, most organizations do these days, but some prefer cooperation, you know. Thus the show, Hard Knocks. Do I have to make all these contracts myself? Anyway. Comeback story. Tony Romo, disgraced by Dak Prescott, 
plays him in a playoff game. Ah, now we got the wheels turning, Tony. The revenge tour. Step one, kick deck out. Step two, kick, uh, who else does Tony Romo over revenge against? I guess the Eagles in general. Yeah. <laughs> Step two, kick the Eagles out. Step three, kick the, uh, Saints out. Yeah, he owes the Saints a lot of revenge, too. But they don't have Drew Brees anymore. But he does owe Sean Payton a lot of revenge. Maybe have him meet the Broncos in the Super Bowl. I don't know. There you go. Comeback story, Tony Romo. Written, fulfilled, destiny. Super Bowl, you don't even have to win it, Tony. You can just appear. <laughs> and people, matter of fact, Tony Romo, if you actually did what I said and appeared in the NFC Conference Championship, you realize people would lose their ever-flipping minds, bro? <laughs> They'd be like, this guy went from fourth string to, uh, well, you know, we just had a couple injuries here and there, and Suddenly, we're in the NFC Championship as the Bucks, Man, we have this guy, you know, pretty good receiver, Chris Godwin. We have some other guy next to him. You know, he's pretty good. Hmm. Oh, well, we might as well try to win this thing. Comeback story of the ages. Anyway, Tony Romo, revenge tour. Redemption. Yeah, just, you know, you'll pay CBS back, Tony. You'll pay him back. <laughs> Let's realize. You go to a Super Bowl, Tony, you ain't paying nobody back, bro. You got that Hall of Fame jacket, and it feels good. It just feels snug. It feels yellow. It feels right. And I know you still keep in game shape because, you know, quarterback mind never deteriorate. deteriorates. So. All right. Think about it, Tony. Anyway, if not this year, next year. You can kick Baker Mayfield out next year. Come on. Anyway, it wouldn't be the first time, Tony, either. If this is what's stopping you, think about this, Tony Romo. You wouldn't be the first quarterback to uh, unretire Brett Favre, anyone? Okay. All right, Tony. You know, I'm just I'm laying out the doormat there for you. Uh, who else? Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah, heard he won a Super Bowl after he unretired. Weird. Uh. Didn't that guy have a perfect season? Uh, I guess he didn't. Thanks, Eli. Love you. Anyway, so... <laughs> Russ has won a Super Bowl. So is Tom Brady. Okay, what are the differences between these two gentlemen? <laughs> one played for the Patriots, and one did not. That's it. That's the whole thing. I mean, one is going through a very public fallout divorce. The other one is, hey, no news is good news, right, Russ? Right? Right? Perfect marriage, right? <laughs> Nah, nah, nah. It's, it's not perfect. But I'd say it's better than Tom's. That's got to count for something. You know, Sierra, you're, you're a lucky, you're a lucky woman. You know, Russ may not be, uh, you know, on the cover of, uh, Hall of Fame magazine. But at least he tries, you know? And, uh, I have a feeling, Sierra, you should be nice to Russ. I, you know what, Sierra? I have a feeling if you asked him to retire right now, right now, after just conquering his demons and ending on a high note of beating the Chiefs for the first time since that day, since, uh, you know, Russ has got to be feeling pretty good. Let me give some advice to Russell Wilson. You know when the best time to retire is? After you win a Super Bowl. <laughs> well, okay, Peyton Manning already did that, so, you know. Do you owe it to your team to ride out the rest of the season? No. 
Russell, Russell Wilson, listen to me carefully. You could retire right now, and you know what your wife Sierra would say? Oof. Look at that sexy mama jamma. He just beat Pat Mahomes. Mm-mm, good. Just like the soup. A little more ferocious, though. She'd welcome you home, and hey, what happens there is none of my business, you know. We talked about that. You never know what's going on behind closed doors. I'm just saying. Think about it, Russ. Walk off from the practice facility right now. Retire. Right now. Retire. In on a high note. You may say, but, uh, hey, the Broncos, they... They could have finished, uh, they could have gone on a little winning streak. Eight and one. Make the play. <laughs> Let's get real. That's not going to happen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they got to play the Chiefs twice. Oh, sorry, three times. If they win both division games, if they somehow squeak into the playoffs at nine, eight, and. Sorry, nine, seven, and one, because the Broncos always seem somehow managed to tie a game. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, if they manage to sneak in at 9, 7, and 1, let me tell you who their opponent's going to be in the playoffs. It's going to be the Chiefs. And they're going to have to beat them three times, not two. So, statistically, very unlikely. You know, Travis Kelsey will be healthy. Matt Mahomes should be healthy. Yeah, are the Broncos going to be completely healthy? No, no, they no, they will not be. There's always at least one or two key injuries. You know, it's cold in Denver. Injuries just happen. Oh, and the playoff game won't be in Denver. So, uh, so and that also Mahomes won't have the flu. Ah, uh, or will he? I don't know. You know. No, but seriously, Russ, take my advice. Retire on a high note. A mile high note. Eh? And see what I did there? Get your Rockies uh, Coors Refreshing Light on sale now. Hashtag not sponsored by Flood. <laughs> no, but seriously, though. This is why psychoanalysis is bad. Did you see what I just did to Russ? <laughs> How I psychoanalyzed his marriage, and now I'm going to psychoanalyze his throwing arm or whatever. Here's the thing. How did Russ beat Mahomes? He used the same throwing arm he's always had. But wait, Flood, that same throwing arm got us to 1-6, and six, or 1-5, and five, or 2-5. and five. Do I care what the Broncos' record is? No. The same throwing motion Russell Wilson used four weeks ago got you that win against my homeboy. Why does that matter? It doesn't. How long has Sean Payton been the coach of the Denver Broncos? Doesn't matter. How did Russ go from the worst quarterback in the division to beating the giant slayer, Patrick Mahomes? Patrick Mahomes had the flu. The loss is on Andy Reid because here's what Andy Reid should have done. There's this thing called the vid. And, you know, when you hear someone has the flu, Andy Reid, here's what you should do in today's NFL with the Rona in the fridge. I'm saying all these things for YouTube so I don't get demonetized. Okay, this loss is on Andy Reid. How do I know it's on Andy Reid? The flu report came out Friday. Oh, Mahomes said he's all better. Is that so? Did you know the standard incubation period and recovery period for the flu is anywhere from two to three weeks after you've had the flu? Now, don't get me wrong. There are some people who can bounce back very, 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 very quickly. I applaud those people. Most of the time, they're single moms, and yeah, they fight through everything. Also, these single moms aren't out here in Denver. 
on Denver's first snow of the year. Hey, maybe they are. Maybe they live in Denver. Maybe they're single moms in Denver who just truck through the snow, the plow, the everything to get to that cubicle office job. That's just their third job to, uh, yeah, go home and meet their wife. You know, they're a single mom of three kids, but they go home to meet their wife of uh, one kid. And they have a perfect blended, perfect blended family. And, uh, hey, <laughs> that flu doesn't keep them down for more than two days. And they just truck on and truck on. And glory be to God, man. Only God could push you through that. No, but this loss is on Andy Reid. <laughs> Sorry, Russ. We're going to talk about the Chiefs for a second. Okay, how's this loss on Andy Reid? You know, Andy Reid, you ever hear of the Rona? You know, the vid? The, <laughs> you know, back in 2020, we had this weird... Anyway, so Andy Reid, what steps would I have taken not to do the loss? Well, here's the steps. Number one, Patrick Mahomes. We're going to play you for one quarter. Then we're going to sit you down. What? Yeah, you're not feeling so hot. I have a feeling you're going to taper off about the second half. Eh, I tell you what, my homeboy. If the score's like, I don't know, close. Like, if it's like 7-9 to nine at halftime, eh, we'll play you to halftime. After that, I'm playing the uh, backup. Backup? Yeah, man. You had the flu. You know, you ever feel not so fresh? My homeboy. You. Flu. Flu guy. Not only that. I'm the coach. Players get played to play. I get played to coach. Here's what I'm telling you, my homeboy, as the coach. I have the power to supersede your authority, number one. Number two, I'm the coach. Number three, no. Number four, no. Number five, no. Sit down. Get off the team bus. You ain't even coming to uh, Denver. But, but, but coach, I got all these sponsorships. I don't care. You have the flu. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Let's say it's the flu and not the, the flu flu. Okay. Did you know having the flu by default, let's say it actually was the flu and not the, the vid. I don't know. I'm not a medical doctor, but uh, I would say the flu attacking your body puts you at higher risk for the vid, the Rona, the 2020 thing. I'm no expert doctor out there, but I would say lowering your white blood cell count and being around hundreds of thousands of screaming fans who love to drink beer and hug and and uh, <laughs> and cheer and kiss and uh, hug again and handshake and just spit on you accidentally when they're drunk, you know. Not a good career move. We're not trying to sped, spread the vid. This is the reason I'm keeping you contained. Number one, the team health. Number two, the team health. Number three, the team health. Number four, I'm the coach. No. Number five, it just snowed in Denver, my homeboy. I wouldn't think that'd be good for your flu. Could make it worse. Did you know, my homeboy, um, a statistic of 0.0000015% people die from the flu every year. Also, you know, the air there in Mile High? Kind of hard to breathe, bro. You know, Mile High. Denver. Mile High? Kind of hard to breathe. And you have the flu, right? Well, we don't know if it's the or the vid. I mean, either way, we know the vid causes a uh, lung restriction. Okay, and you're going to Mile High. That doesn't, uh, you know, I'm no medical expert, my homeboy. Stay in Kansas City. Love your wife. Stay home. Watch the game with your wife. Okay. <laughs> you want your endorsement deals, right? I give you permission, my homeboy, to go to the press box. And we're going to air the game from the stadium like we always do because we're the Chiefs. But you get exclusive access to the press box. Your wife, it's going to be rented out. I'm going to pay for it to be rented out. The owner's going to pay for it to be rented out. Just you, your wife, your crazy brother Jackson, and a few of your closest friends who don't have the flu. Oh, and uh, me and the second stream 
me and the second string team are going to go defeat the Denver Broncos. Because I think with my backups, we can beat <laughs> Russell Wilson. Yeah. Okay, and if they beat us, they didn't beat my homeboy. No. <laughs> they beat uh, the backup, Trent Dilfer, or whatever his name is. Sorry, back up to Kansas City. I don't know your name. Ben Anthony Danucci? Is that who it is? <laughs> okay, so we've explained the Russell Wilson heroic journey. It's not that Russ found his arm magically. No, it's that Mahomes sucked. <laughs> hey, sometimes your path to greatness can be one man's bad day. And Russ, let that be a lesson to you. Sometimes being psychoanalyzed is just funny. <laughs> you know, Russ is just sitting there just saying, yeah, I got a Super Bowl ring. I'm getting paid a steady amount of money. I don't have to be a tryhard like Tom. You know, Brady, that perfect season guy. <laughs> You see where being a tryhard gets you. Remember what happened to Tom? Ah, okay. But I don't have to be, you know, I don't have to be like that Eli guy either. There's no great beast of destiny to defeat. No, nah, I can just, hey, I got my Super Bowl. People love me, man. People in Seattle love me. And I didn't want to leave, but they didn't want to pay me, dog. So you know what? I'm going to sit here in Denver. I'm going to sit here with Coach Sean. I'm going to sit here with my wife. You know my wife. <laughs> you guys know Sierra. Yeah, she's great. Hey, come up here, baby. Why don't you say something to the press there? Oh, and uh, uh, drop your latest album while you're at it. I'm done answering questions. Mic drop. And that's why psychoanalysis is both good and bad. Bad. We've already covered it. You know. Good. Hey, maybe all those people shit-talking Russ got him to play a little better. Or not. Maybe Mahomes just sucked. All right, guys, that's all I got for this one. Uh, yep, that's it for NFL Podcast, and I'll see you all next time. Bye. <laughs>